Yeah, welcome to another episode of the Racer X Exhaust Podcast. I'm Jason Wygant. Why not do it? Why not send a text to Ken Roxon and see if he wants to talk? Haven't heard from him in ages. Dropped out of Monster Energy AMA Supercross after Daytona, saying he was taking a break, not really specifying much beyond that. No one had really even talked to him before that. He had been struggling at the races. He wasn't in the press conferences because he wasn't on the podium. Only information we had was some brutally honest and frankly depressing quotes in Honda press releases that we get every Monday. Credit to Honda's media department for just letting it fly. Ken said he was struggling, and they left it in there. And I think, honestly, it sounded so bad that a lot of us, myself included, were wondering, uh, is he going to be back for motocross, or, or is he going to be back at all? Well, uh, about two, three weeks ago, I started seeing Ken back on Instagram, testing with the team. Clearly, he will be back for motocross. He will confirm it in this interview. But like I said, why not send him a text and ask for an explanation and what happened and what is going to happen? So he will be our guest today. Ken Roxon on his Honda, always shod with Yoshibira Exhaust. They are our title sponsor of the show. Check out the RS12 Exhaust for your Honda or your Yamaha or your Kawasaki or one of the Austrian brands, KTM, Husqvarna, Gas Gas, or Suzuki. Of course, great heritage there. Go to Yoshimira-RD.com, the official exhaust of all the factory Honda boys. Also, this is brought to you by Liet. That's L-E-A-T-T.com. When it comes to picking out riding gear or a kit, a quality set of boots is definitely something you should invest in. They are key points of contact with your bike, so it's essential that your feet and your ankles and shins stay comfortable and protected. That's where the Liat 5.5 Flex Lock boot, which is, took three years to develop, comes in. Testing came from their pro athletes from all over the world and also included Racer X's own Chris Kiefer. The boot is designed with outstanding comfort and grip optimization with unique features like the auto-locking one-way slide enclosure for a great seal at the top of the boot. And Liat's adjustable flex lock system reduces forces to the ankle by up to 37% and the knee by up to 35% because it locks out ankle movement when it's over flexed, which gives you that feeling of security. Boots available in four colorways, as well as the new Enduro version in additional two colorways for just $399.99. Very cheap for a high-end boot. Go to leatt.com. That's liat.com. And as usual, our podcast this year brought to you by OnTrack School. That's the K-12 distance learning school for students who are on the go. Chase your dreams, blaze your trails with nothing holding you back. There are no limits to what you can do when the classroom is where you make it. On Track School meets you where you are with a flexible, personalized education that happens at your own pace. So pursue your dreams and your education, both with On Track. And after the episode, be sure to head over to ontrackschool.com. Type in the code RX22 for $100 off your sign-up. That's ontrackschool.com to learn more. And if you're going to sign up, type in RX22 for $100 off of sign up. Also, shout out to our own Racer X merchandise department. This is, uh, we're part of the FMF drop. This is a GNCC shirt. Uh, it's really hard on Zoom here. Everything's reverse, Zoom, mirror. There we go. I got it. Yes. Uh, it's got a really cool logo on the back. Uh, check it out on, the, uh, on our social or on our website. Whenever we have GNCC coverage, we'll show you how you can get this shirt. If you're a GNCC guy, you definitely want goods for the woods with this FMF GNCC collab shirt. Go to racerxonline.com for more and also subscribe to the magazine. I got two stories in the issue that just came out and you can read them online or you'll get into the mail. Go to racerxonline.com slash Weege. Can't read them online unless you subscribe. Just saying. Let's dial in Ken Roxon. Well, this is awesome. We're joined by long lost Ken Roxon. I have a very <laughs> simple question. How are you doing right now? <laughs> honestly right now I'm, I'm doing great um it's taken a long time for me to get there not gonna lie like i feel like just very recently i've just started to um you know get happy uh and and don't get me wrong you know i have my family around me and stuff so that is huge of course but just with everything around me you know obviously with my job like that's what we do 90 percent of the time right i needed time and there was a lot going on and i feel like just recently it's starting to come around um i wouldn't say that i'm 100 percent by any means uh, but I'm happy and I'm super ambitious and I, I'm putting in the work and uh, I'm ready for the road that's ahead of me. Yeah, it was cool to see you on Instagram doing some testing and all that. So you're coming back. You're racing uh, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross here in a couple of weeks. I'm freaking doing it. Yeah. Uh, your season obviously was weird and it probably was made weirder over the fact that you won Anaheim 1, which made it look even stranger when things started to go sideways. But you kept telling us before Anaheim 1, that you had had some problems preseason. So did Anaheim one almost like, was that almost like a fake result? Like it, it misled us to think, oh, he's good. He's dialed. Everything's great. Did that actually make it seem stranger than it actually was? 
Um, it was a little strange, but at the same time, I, I just, I guess my focus once we started racing was there. Um, mm -hmm. so that helped out big time. Um, but that December thing that happened was super annoying because before that I felt like the old rocks was coming back and I haven't had that feeling that I had during that time. I mean, I was happy, I was strong and um, it was something that was a little foreign to me, to be honest, you know, because it's been so long and then December happened and everything got flipped sideways and it's kind of scary going into the season. Um, I feel like that underprepared because the entire December was a wash for me. I didn't ride. Um, I didn't, you know, do anything really. And um, it was kind of hard on me because it was basically kind of like another year is going by, you know, starting the season. And I'm like, dude, I can't just, you know, be normal. So anyways, yeah. we go racing and I win and the track was brutal. I wasn't quite a hundred percent with the bike. And um, so after that, we still, we kept testing and, you know, I kept trying and trying and trying, but ultimately all this thing, it was building up for a really long time. Right. Cause for the last few years, there was always stuff going on and, and that wears on somebody. Right. So at some point I caught COVID and um, I don't think anybody really, really knows, but it sat on my brain. There's something called the Imagdala or whatever it's called. It's like a, it's like a um, um, almond size, you know, thing in your brain. And wow. I guess that was super inflamed and I guess animals have it too. And, and it's when a predator or something comes, right? Like it's the, the, something that tells you, or your brain's kind of like freaking out, you know, and, and you're starting to run essentially. Right. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that at one point. Right. But I was just feeling super weird. First off, um, I flew to Europe in between races and, um, yeah, I, I, I got some treatment and, um, it was just a really tough time. There was a lot thrown at me so quickly again, you know, and essentially it felt to me like it was just, everything just exploded. And I was so physically and mentally drained to keep trying and trying and always being set back. And um, I had a lot of work to do on myself to get ready, get fit. And me and the Honda team decided that, you know, the way it's going right now, um, I kept trying and trying. It's just, it made no sense to keep going because I would have, you know, most likely sucked the rest of the Supercross season. And then I start off outdoors you know being miserable again and it was just a recipe for disaster really so we just decided to take a step back to uh work on everything and um, it was the right decision and i appreciate my team as well cooperating with me because obviously it's been a story for the last few years and it's really frustrating for me trust me i'm the, i don't want to talk about it but what am i going to do about it right so i've said that multiple times too so it's just a super funky year and and um honestly i feel like things almost got worse before they got better unfortunately yeah, because look, I, way back when, when you had the big arm injuries, you were the most transparent and upfront about all of it the whole time. And I'm sure you were like, this is the guy I want to be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be upfront about it. And I can tell. Yeah, and, years, and that's how like, I felt. You got that's tired of That's just how that. I felt. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, and, and I, uh, but I felt that way. I didn't really have that many issues, right? Like I was strong. I, could, I was young. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I'm old now, but what I'm saying, yeah. it's a long time ago, right? And I was in my early 20s, mid 20s. Mm -hmm. It's I feel like, you know, that's when you're starting to peak and, mentally and physically i just felt like i was so strong there was nothing that could derail me <laughs> besides that injury of course yeah yeah and then that happened and then things just was, were never the same so technically my mentality for the longest time was like that yeah but before we know what was really going on you know i was trying to have that mentality and everything and i went out riding and i'm like dude after two laps of riding i'm dead you know what i mean and then i'm like there's no way i can be that unfit you know, we're yeah. doing so much work and I'm like, I can't do anymore because I'd go even more backward. So it was just like, uh, you know, uh, we call it the devil's circle. Like, I just didn't know what was going on. So that was wearing on me so bad. And it was race after race. And I feel like I should be up there. I want to be up there, but my body was just not giving it to me. And that just came on. And, and then last year, what was tough too, I poured my soul and my heart into the 2021 season. I think everybody could see that during Supercross. Like, I just wanted to grit it out, but no matter what I did, it still, um, it still kind of bit me in the ass a little bit, you know, and I kind of have, I'm kind of have a feeling that 2021, you know, racing supercross and motocross again, that was the first time I've raced both for a while mm -hmm. and it's so hard on your body. And, you know, when you're starting to struggle with this EBV virus and you just drain your body every weekend, I remember it last year during outdoors, the last four races, they were just hot, you know, and yeah, that was like the last thing that I wanted in that situation. So it was a tough time. And then before you know it, the Supercross season comes around again, the immune system is down and just 
one thing led to another and it was just too much at one point you know what i mean you just yeah, keep what trying I'm saying and is trying, like, trying you you're you were super good at being i'm going to tell everybody what's going on all the time but i feel like you've way past that you're tired of talking you're sick and tired about having to talk about how you're sick and tired you'd rather just i'm yeah. gonna go away for a bit and i'll see you later <laughs> yeah kind of i feel like that's what what was needed for me obviously i yeah. was kind of um i abandoned instagram for a little bit just mm -hmm. because i was so tired of all of this shit you know and Mm -hmm. um but honestly i kind of just want to leave this behind me because right now i'm starting to come around and okay. um you know i'm i'm putting in the work physically mentally and um i'm i'm doing this again so uh, and i wasn't sure about that if, if i was ever going to get there again <laughs> to be honest and, and it takes a lot of time and it's kind of scary honestly but um i want to do this and um you know i'm not saying that i'm going to show up to paula and i'm going to absolutely demolish everybody that's not not really even my plan you know i want to i want to be my personal best and you know away from racing i'm doing everything i can uh with being healthy and everything to to get myself to the point eventually again and i honestly i just want to enjoy the road of like, trying to figure out what do i need to get back to where i used to be and maybe even better who knows yeah because uh what you had said in the off season you went to europe a little bit there like you just keep turning over rocks and stones trying to find solutions right absolutely yeah i've spent so much money in the last few years to um kind of like just you know i guess maybe eliminate but maybe it's not even about eliminating what's going on i think it's more so managing it and i feel like i can do it it's just trying to find the right recipe for it yeah and does this all stem from trying to come back from those original injuries and, and all that or is that a coincidence or is this all tied um, in where your body's not the same it, it seemed to me so i think this whole ebb thing um it looks like that it's always been in my body um yeah. but it's just been dormant I feel like I had signs back in the day, but with being young and a strong immune system, um, I could manage and it didn't really phase me too much. And, you know, after the injury or I would, let's say both injuries, it was just never really the same again. And, and uh, we didn't know, I didn't think about EBV or anything. All I knew is that I was not feeling that great. Right. Yeah. Um, so, but I think, I think I will be uh, uh, able to manage it. It was, it just seems like after I have my immune system, everything was so smashed and actually I have realized that when I take antibiotics, for example, those ruin me. So in 2019, remember the San Diego mud race where it was just a complete shit show and everybody got burned from the lime and everything oh, yeah. yep. ruined me. And I feel like that was really the start right then and there that I, cause I was on back-to-back -back antibiotic cycles and that's what ruined me. But when you don't know that that ruins you, you're kind of like looking and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? You're just trying to figure it out, but. Um, I've had to take antibiotics after that and the same thing happened. So something with my immune system and, and those things and which whatever was going on, it could also be with my injuries. I think I was on a lot of antibiotics, um, intravenous, you know, through IVs back when I was in the hospital, I don't know what happened, but it, they must've just absolutely trashed me. And, and it's freaking hard bouncing back from that for some reason, at least for me. You know, because you took a break. We didn't really know exactly why. You know, sometimes we just think maybe a guy's just over it. Maybe it's not physical. Maybe it's mental. Um, were you at some point thinking like, maybe I just don't want to race dirt bikes anymore? Or was this always just a medical quest to, to get healthy? For sure. For yeah. sure. It was like that. But the reason I got there was simply because I kept trying my ass off and I'm just keep getting punched in the gut. You know what I mean? How many times are you going to do that? You know? Yeah. Yep. Um, and I'm the kind of guy, like if I do it, I'm freaking all in, you know what I mean? So when I'm all in and then, you know, you get punched and then you, you, you re-motivate yourself and you're all in again. And then something yep. happens again and then you re-motivate yourself. And then at one point it's just, holy shit, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Um, and that sometimes takes time. Um, and quite honestly, even once I stopped racing supercross this year, this time people think that that's a lot of time but when you have certain issues that's not a lot of time coming to outdoors you know like ideally right. 2023 it would have been sweet to like just focus on that but I, i'm i gotta be happy where i'm at right now um you know compared to what i thought it was gonna be but um i think things like that just take time so really two months or whatever it's not that much time yeah that's the thing every time i get a base racing calendar <laughs> yeah and every time i get a base and i get fit something happened and then all of a sudden i take four weeks off five weeks off. so i just never i'm never able to build you know so i always start from scratch i feel like right so the other stuff if you, if you felt good all the time the other stuff pressure and, and all that even the risk of racing like you're cool with all that it, it really just comes down to if you felt healthy you're fine it, that, that's the whole thing yeah exactly yeah, yeah. if yeah. i'm healthy i'm fine like i 
I can still rip on a dirt bike, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and I still know how to ride. And, and honestly, and it's when still I feel fun good, for you. yeah. And yeah. when I feel good, it's absolutely mm -hmm. fun. But sometimes with all of these problems, especially when they come back to back to back to back, yeah. me no likey so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so really then what I'm saying that Anaheim one win, was that probably not really an indicator of how you're going to do all year? Cause it looks crazy when you have a drop after that, but um, you're saying all along well, it probably wasn't going to be great. I guess I, well, I guess I was good enough to win. It isn't a fluke. Like I've won yeah. before, you know what I mean? And, and I yeah. got good starts. I won the heat race and the track was hammered and you can't get lucky like that. You know what I mean? If yeah. you do it once like that and, and I, it's not like I've never won before and just had one win. Right. Yeah. Um, but again, last year doing outdoors, trying to go again. I went to Austria to Red Bull. I did a bunch of tests and everything yeah. like together with Blake. We went there, we had the greatest three weeks over in Europe and it was mm -hmm. I just revamped myself a little bit and, um, you know, then that happened. So then I went to Anaheim. I'm like, Oh dude, I don't know how this is going to go. Well, then I'm winning and I'm like trying to do this again. And, uh, it, and then one thing leads to another and I got sick and COVID and like all of this crap. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And obviously you saw me riding around. Like I felt physically like crap, mentally like crap. And I can't compete the way I always compare it is that, if I feel the way I feel, and then a guy like Tomek um, undeniably probably feels like how I felt in 2016, like I felt like I was on top of the world. I can't compete with that feeling like that. You know, how am I going to win when things do not go right <laughs> for, yeah. for athletes at our level, there is a very specific routine. Like you kind of fall into this, you fall into this um, rhythm almost, you know what I mean? That sometimes it's, it's hard to get and you get lucky and the things just go right. And all of a sudden you're in this rhythm where you just click or not you know what i mean yeah. it can also be the complete opposite yeah and for a guy like you like i guess you could have come and got a bunch of ninth place finishes for the rest of the year but guys at your level usually just don't do that yeah yeah ninth try freaking 13th like how <laughs> some of the races were and then i would have gone to outdoors and probably would have gotten 25th <laughs> yeah yeah there you go uh another thing it looked like you were chasing was okay you had a new bike last year you were obviously great immediately on it last year then we hear you and chase we're working on the bike. We're working on the bike. We're working on the bike. So explain to me the metamorphosis, how the first time you were on it, the early races of 21, you were good. And how since then, both of you have had to make some serious changes. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's been, that's been a whole nother story. Um, especially in the situation that I was in being, I guess, unhappy with everything that was going on, um, you know, medically, physically with me and mentally, and then trying to get the bike right. That's really difficult too. When I feel like back in the day, when I was good and mentally strong, like last year, for example, I had my struggles with the bike last year as well, but I was pretty damn strong for most of the supercross season and stuff. So I can make up for it. But in that situation, I just, there was no way I was going to be able to make up for it, but I definitely really struggled with the bike. And, um, you know, you test, you test, you test and, you know, mix that together with what was going on with me. It's just a recipe for disaster. Yeah, so we saw what like five straight days of testing or something like that you did two weeks ago. Like you're dialing yep. it in now, every freaking day. <laughs> and you know it's never going to be perfect, but we put in the work. I'm putting in the work. Team's putting in the work. I honestly, just want to go racing, and um, I, I feel horrible not racing. Like it's I, I think you know that's actually probably a big problem. Every time I don't race, I seclude myself from the sport because I want to be out there, you know, as a competitor, and I'm just like that. I. I as bad as it sounds most of the time, I hate being at the races and I don't want this to sound wrong, but I want to race and I want to be out there because that's just, it's been, it's in my DNA. And um, when I can't, it just makes me more miserable, which I, I should probably work on that mindset like that and um, not be like that. But unfortunately, I, and I, I think any rider really, you know, if you're in, the, in your career and you have to come to races or whatever, and you're not racing, it kind of hurts my soul a little bit, you know? It's honestly pretty typical. You're like the hundredth guy that's told me that. If you're a guy that thinks sure. you win and you're watching other people win and you can't do anything about it on that day, I I'm sure it kills you. That's pretty much simple as that, right? Yep, Yeah. exactly. Because uh, you know what you're capable of. But I, I still think it's good to hear that this wasn't, maybe I've reached the end of the road. You were just on a search to try to get back to your level. Because some guys at your age and that the amount of races you've done, well, sometimes you're I just was unsure. Yeah. I was unsure though, right? Like at that point when it seems like not the world's ending, but when, when career wise and everything, yeah. cause then I'm, I turned 28, I'm not saying that I'm old, but a lot of people retire before that age, you know what yes. I mean? And with everything that's going on and you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, there are a lot of thoughts of like, you know, maybe I'm just going to freaking be done with it. 
it just takes me, it took me a long time to figure out what I wanted, but I flipped everything upside down and I want to freaking do this again. I'm going to give this a good whirl again. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you're not making any proclamations of how it's even going to go. You're just going to show up and race. Um, it's just a little bit unknown for me. Right. Yeah. And it seems like that's kind of been like that for the previous year as well. And I am not kidding when I say that. And I, I think you can, and I feel like other people have said it before outdoor started last year, when I was riding and testing, it was not pretty. It was not pretty. Having said that I'm a racer, right? Like once the gate drops, I just change. Yeah. But it was not pretty. It was definitely not pretty. Um, but you know, so that, that kind of means that anything's possible, I guess. I could come out, out and, and why be really you're so good. good at the darn opening rounds of series. Cause the amount of series you've come into saying, I don't know how it's going to go. Or you even tell us it's going to go bad and then you win. It happens all the time. Yeah. And, and honestly, it's not even really just in the beginning. I think it's just when the gate drops, I just okay. have a different mindset. And most of the time when I really start not doing well, it's physically for me. Right. And, yeah. um, that's unfortunately, I don't know. I don't, I do not, not know how to ride a dirt bike all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've done too much work to be unfit. You know what I mean? You know, I did a pod with your buddy, uh, Adam Cianciarulo, like a month ago. And he said this brilliant thing where he's like, you're taught to think hard work automatically equals results, but that's just not how it works. Like the sport doesn't owe you, you did this amount of work. I owe you victories. That has to be so hard to square with. Maybe back in the day. Yeah. Right. Like I feel like years and years and years ago, there were three guys or whatever. And then, you know, you get podiums or people crash on the, on the start and then come back to third. I yeah. feel like it just doesn't happen anymore. Like everybody does a lot of work right now. So at this point, just doing a lot of work, doesn't, everything has to kind of click. You got to be pretty dang happy with your bike. Yep. Plus do a lot of work and have some really consistent training days and just have that little bit of extra sauce to be up there, you know? Uh, you have obviously hit some highs. You've won plenty of races since you've gone through all this turmoil. Um, do you appreciate it a little more? And maybe it happens again. Maybe you win again. And, and do you have a better appreciation because you have gone through times where it's gone? You couldn't race at all or you couldn't win. Does that help a little let, bit when you do get back to the top? Let me tell you that. Back in 2017 and 18, it was gnarly, right? Like coming back and then that win was unbelievable. Yeah. But honestly, right now for me lately and and – that's how, because everybody's problems are uniquely themselves, right? Like nobody will ever really know how I feel. Um, if I come back and podium and do good again and win, that's really far up there because only people that are really close to me and my wife, my family really know, because um, I talk about it, like I'm pretty transparent with, with all my close friends and, and my family. And they really only knew what was going on and how I felt and, um, you know, a couple of people from the team. So if I come back now and, and start doing good again and, and get a win or wins or whatever that may be, yeah, it honestly means the world to me. It really does. Yeah, because I'm sure if we look at 2016, say, outdoors, it probably was coming pretty easy. I'm sure you're working, but it probably didn't seem like a big deal when you won. You're just like, yeah, I won again. Yeah, I don't really know that those days are so far gone at this <laughs> point. But back then, it was just, it was just an amazing time. And that's one of those things like I was just things were clicking. I was unbelievably fit mentally, physically. I really, I didn't do a click to the bike. You know, once actually after the first few supercross rounds, I figured something out, never did a change again. So that helped me out. So I always knew on all different dirt types of soils, what the bike was doing that helped me out coming into outdoors. Same thing. We had a couple of days of testing. We got the bike so dialed and, um, I just, you know, I was unstoppable. I just didn't change a click and I knew what the bike was doing, no matter what condition we were in. And, it was just one of those years where I just felt like nothing could derail me. Yeah. So uh, even though then, I didn't go 24 and 0, but I know, but it was like 21 and 0 or something, wasn't it? 20. Well, it would have been 21 if my forks wouldn't have broke. Right. Yeah. But yeah, we have ridiculously high standards in this sport. 20, 20, it, and, 20 and 4 is pretty good. Um, yeah. Let me, let me hit a couple other things. Um, Ryan Dungey is coming back. You're going to be racing Ryan Dungey again. <laughs> Are you as surprised as everybody else? I know you and Dungeon are pretty tight. It came out of nowhere for most of us. Yes and no. Believe it or not, last year, um, I, was, I was in contact with him constantly. He was helping me out a lot during uh, race weekends and um, during the week. Like We were almost in contact on a daily basis, really. You know, We became really close friends. And even up until now, I mean, lately there was a time where we didn't talk for a while, but no – he, he's just become more of a friend, right? And mm -hmm. I knew at some point that he was playing or thinking about coming back and, and it didn't happen but honestly I feel like the opportunity at this point 
was so perfect because KTM was looking for writers. And if he wouldn't have done it now, I feel like it would have never, it would never happen, you know? So um, he's coming back, you know, he's going to be good. He's going to be fit. Having said that, um, the level is just a little bit different now as well. Right. Um, there's a lot of riders that can win, not just three or four, you know? Yep. So it'll be interesting. Like I'm honestly, I'm kind of just as interested. And once I heard the news and everything, I texted him. I said, Hey, you want to rub elbows or what? Yeah. So we jumped on the call and he's like, dude, I meant to call you. And like this, and that, and, um, I'm just pumped. Like it's been a long time and you know, us racing each other again, it's so cool. And I think, I mean, even though five years or was it, is it five or six years that he hasn't raced? Yeah. Um, it probably did him good. And I think quite honestly, like he's 32 or whatever he, especially him being so healthy, he was pretty good with injuries. He didn't really have that any crazy injuries, probably did him really well. And um, I feel like you can keep going the, the times have just changed a little bit. And if you can stay, if you can stay healthy, like the age thing, it's not really that big of a deal anymore. You know, not in your, not while you're 30 and early thirties, I think you can be just as good as how you were in 27 or 28 or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you said you were 28, but whatever Anderson and Tomac were the best guys in supercross and they're even a few years older than you. So it, exactly still young things have changed <laughs> yeah yeah i i even hate saying like i feel like back in the day this card gets played all the time at the like, oh, oh, yeah. 28 and oh my god i'm like shut up dude that is not old you know what i mean even though at times we may feel old because i say the same thing i'm like i'm 28 feel like 65 just as a joke <laughs> but realistically when when things are in check like you can do this you know unfortunately we have a lot of racing going on like i feel like that is not ideal at all mm -hmm. um because compared to other sports, I mean, tell me another sport, you know, besides some certain ball games, maybe that do that much racing that we do, you know, I think if it was half of that, we could race until we're freaking 35, 40 average, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're off season. Like I mean, JB. Yeah. Like JB. Cause he does half the year. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause seriously, but you know, it sounds, so it sounds like half of the year, right. But we're still racing 17 rounds of Supercross. So yeah. it's not like you're only doing five races, right? You're still in 17 rounds. That's a full season. GPs do 20. So that's like three races more. And, and it's still 10 races less than we do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you raced all Supercross and all outdoors last year. How long was your off season? Like maybe was it the month of September? Was it even a whole month where you weren't racing yeah, or I'm, thinking about the next year? One month? I'm always, I'm always taking at least a month. Yeah. One month. So you, 11 mm -hmm. months a year, you're pretty much hammered out. That's, much, yeah. that's pretty gnarly um okay also joining the, the racing this year is tony caroli and i don't even know have you ever raced him? he's gonna be good mark my oh word. okay you're saying it i don't look at him as being retired we're close okay. friends like we talk all the time mm -hmm. and um I, I really love the whole family i've known them for a really really long time um he's had i feel like he's had a normal off season he's going into outdoors right like he's good and he's gonna be good and i i, I admire him what he has done even after 30 just staying as sharp as he was so i'm so excited to race both of those guys really um i would have never thought that i would be racing tony again but i'm glad it's happening yeah you say race him again how many times have you raced him how did this actually your timing well how so 250 250 mm -hmm. times obviously it would only be destinations yep. um and then um 2018 destinations and red bud i haven't raced him that much i didn't think so you I would have like loved to. Hmm? Yeah, I would have loved to, but we were on yeah. such different schedules slash everything, yeah. right? If I would have stayed in Europe, obviously that would have happened, but sure. we we're on su such different levels of um, schedules that it, I don't know. I just would have never thought it would happen again. So, yeah, it's exciting, exciting that this came together. Uh, you mentioned our guy, Justin Brayton, here. We're, we're both buddies with him. You had an awesome post a couple of days ago on Instagram, just like thanking him. I don't know if people know behind the scenes um if people are just teammates or if they're friends how deep it goes but that was really cool some of the thoughts you had and, and how close you guys have become the last few years we have yes we have grown really close and um like i said in the post in this technically short amount of time we have spent so much time together first off us being teammates him staying at my house when he would come to california we've gone at this point on quite a few vacation trips slash even while we were staying in salt lake the entire month or over month of salt lake during 2019 or 20 was it 20 i think it was right 20, yeah um yeah we rented a house together with the whole family and the kids the kids have grown so close to me and um, parker and beckham both of them so very unique relationship and uh, i'm a little bit bummed that we haven't really gotten in contact slash met each other before that 
you know, so we, but obviously we have a lot of years to go even once I'm done racing and stuff. So there's going to be plenty of um, trips together. And honestly, I think he'll come to a few outdoor races with me this year. Maybe um, if court can't come or whatever, you know, there's some of the races that are close by, but he's such a good guy. He's basically pretty much willing to go to, I feel like any race that I would ask him to. So um, he's, he's probably going to be with me for a few rounds. Uh, one thing you mentioned in the post is that he does such a good job, you know, the group that he surrounds himself with. And here you are saying you're tight with Caroli, really. You're tight with Dunge. Uh, I, people never know behind the scenes. Uh, you all have figured that part of the game out. You know, having your contacts, having your confidants, having your people to just oh. talk to. Um, that's a huge part of it. And I think everybody's figured that out now. And uh, people probably don't even know who your contacts are. But it's cool to hear about these behind the scenes things like Dunge and Brayton and, and even Caroli. I think it's an age thing too, right? Like yeah. back in the day when we were racing each other in 2016, I was just a cocky little mofo, you know what I mean? And I just wanted to beat everybody. Um, I still want to beat everybody, but okay. with time and, and um, I've always been like, I grew up with me and a couple of my best friends before the destinations, even in 2012, like my dad would just sent me off with them and motorhomes and we would go to Belgium and go all these practice tracks. Like I grew up surrounding myself with really close friends. And uh, my best friend still to this day, and, and especially back in the day, Timmy, um, I trained with him for many years back in Europe. Like we stayed at each other's houses and we were day to day training partners because he was racing as well. And I grew up the same way I feel like JB grew up. He surrounded his, himself with friends that he's known for many, many, many years. And that used to be training partners at one point. They travel the world together. So I kind of grew up in a very similar way. So I feel like in this sport, more so here in the U.S., the riders kind of seclude themselves a little bit from that. Mm -hmm. And I grew up differently. And I think there's just a few a few people that um, are different, you know, like JB, for example. And um, um, it just it kind of just has to be right. Right. Like even though JB and I are on uh, pretty much different like day and night and certain things we're the same with a lot of things like we get along so well. And we joke. We have the same humor. You know what I mean? So I think that's why we get along so well. And um maybe there are other people like that in the sport but i think during our careers some just get a little bit more uptight you know what i mean so it's just a bit more sensitive and uh, you know another person is adam like me and adam have are really close we almost talk on a daily basis and i think a lot of it is from having some of the same struggles with injuries and and uh, i've known adam for a really long time and you know we've spent a lot of time together and uh, i value friendships and, and relationships in general a lot it's it's the most fun to me and the most important what we're seeing here is a lot of guys getting this appreciation for the sport uh in their latter years and maybe that also helps with the friendships because like you said when you're younger maybe you're a little more or maybe you're just a little different about being competitive right i think um, that's way of life in yeah. general with anything yeah. you just go through a time where all you want to do is like you get exposed to partying but i mean that in a healthy way right you're just having fun so you just your interests are different and yeah. then you grow older and especially once you get a family you value things a little bit different i can't tell you the last time i've partied literally <laughs> it had to be way 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 before um COVID, for example but also at this point i don't really have any interest like i would much rather have a cocktail with my friends hanging on the beach you know what i mean than going to bars and clubs and everything um that could also be just because i have a family and some people at 28 they don't have a family so they probably still do the same thing right but um i've changed a lot with that what's you know when it comes to that yeah, we're going to hashtag dad life, I think, is a, pretty, a bit of a factor uh, there. Pretty for much, sure. yeah. uh, but what I'm getting at is like, so we're seeing these older guys like now Eli's like happier at the races than ever. Jason Anderson's like, I hope I never retire. And like three years ago, he was like wanting to retire. So are you do you think you're getting that runway where you're like, if I could just get um, this other stuff under control, man, I really enjoy racing. I don't know what it'd be like to not race. I I really enjoy this and I don't want to lose it because um, it's tough to find that perfect balance. But it's, you see yourself counting the days or like, no, I still really enjoy this at times. Yes. But that was yeah. simply when things are going good, everything right. is always roses. Right. Um, yes. But for me, it has in the racing side of things have not been going good. And sometimes it takes time. Like it's a decision that you have to make with yourself. You know, yeah. nobody can do that for you, but you and ask JB or my wife, how many times I've talked about, I'm freaking done with the shit. I'm going to retire. Yeah. <laughs> deep down in me i don't want to you know we all know that um but that's also why i don't act on my first thought you know what i yeah. mean i let things marinate and sit down i have conversations i always dish everything out what my feelings are and and it helps me so 
once I'm, when I'm done, I think I'll know, I will really know when I'm done. And at this very moment, I'm revamping myself and I want to do this again. So we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I still, I mean, we've done this 90% of our life. Think about, it is easy to say, I'm going to retire now in a month or two months. I feel like it's a recipe. It happens to everybody. They wonder, shit, did I do the right thing? Mm -hmm. Probably not when you're in your mid, late twenties, you know what I mean? But sometimes those feelings that you have, they overpower you. And that's okay. Because if you have a strong feeling to do that, you know, I feel like you, you can come back, you know, like Dunge is doing, and you can do that early. You don't have to wait five years. You know what I mean? I think it's tough, but I personally feel like if I would take, I'm not saying that's what I'm going to do, but I feel like if I would take a year off and get away from everything, I think I can juice myself, meaning, um, get, um, just, get a break from everything is what I mean. Not steroids, yeah, getting yeah, yeah. a break from everything and be fired up again to do this again. And I think that is possible. It might right. be, you know, I, you know, you don't know until you're doing it, but I, I, that's my personal feeling. I've done that with a bad injury. That was definitely not vacation. You know what I mean? It was the opposite. It was hard on me more than anything. So I think just taking a step back because you, I feel like you wouldn't stop what you're doing. You know what I mean? You can, have fun, like get away from it, ride when you want to ride. If you don't, don't, but then make a decision when you want to go, you take it serious and you don't just like, eh, I'm going to just do a couple of races and see how it's going. You, you're doing it. Like, that's how I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what happened with Dunge. I don't think his plan was five years, but uh, even if it had been two years or something, uh, mm -hmm. might've worked out, might've worked out awesome. Plus I feel like you guys, you just have such high standards, right? You, you expect to win every darn race. And if you're not getting results, uh, it seems like the end of the world. Retiring probably isn't so fun well, either. <laughs> that's a mindset you just have to work on though, right? Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard for the person that is in that spotlight and that is winning. And then you're yeah. not winning and you have a lot of problems. And for somebody else to go, well, that, 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 that. It's just, you have to make that decision with yourself. You have to work on yourself and you have to realize that, hey, there's other things than just racing. So it is not always about winning. You got to be happy with yourself, you know? And, and I've always said, for me, it's not so much about winning because I can go down in the first turn, ride the race of my life and get a certain thing or whatever. And I am way happier with that than sometimes getting a third and, you know, riding like shit and getting lucky, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, I, I feel like last year you wrote, you earned or, or talked about that quite a bit. You're just, as long as you do your best and you feel good, you're not going to stress over what the number is at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And it's frustrating in the end for me, what was always most frustrating is that I had my mindset, everything I had my head on my shoulders. I, I would say I did more work in a way than I've ever done before. And then you just get disappointed when the shit flares up and your immune system is down. And I know that I've done everything, but you feel like ass and you don't get paid for your work. That's what is so tough for me, really. Yep. All right. Well, this is good to hear. Also that something you have to learn. Yeah. yeah. Also something you have to just learn, you know, you learn how to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, but you've had to learn more than most. Jeez. Yeah, unfortunately, that's yeah. probably true. But uh, hey, okay. So I'm all you know at this point is, up. yeah, yeah. You you think you've got it under control? You don't know for sure. Hopefully, hopefully this is the last time we have a conversation about this kind of stuff, right? And but you know what I've noticed too, and I've just had that conversation actually with JB. When I feel that way and like I secluded myself from the sport and. I, I show up at the race. I'm not racing, and I've done like sh I've written like shit lately. But people, hope, you know, it seems like it at least, people still love me. And, like, that felt good, you know. And it, it kind of opens your eyes and be like, hey, I haven't won lately whatsoever. Granted, it is not that long ago. But I haven't really, you know, done that well. But people seem to appreciate maybe the person that I am and what we've gone through. And I always hear that I've helped out so many people that had struggles in their life, whether that was physically or mentally or whatever. Um, that's pretty damn cool, too. There you go. All right, well. Hopefully we're never at the point where you're not racing and coming to the races, but if you do, maybe you'll be happier to come around. <laughs> maybe you learn yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. That's right. um, but you can't guarantee that you've got this solved right now. You just feel like maybe, maybe you've made a positive um, step. Yeah. I feel like I, I, I will. Um, okay. Cause this year, it, this year, it just, this year, everything hit me kind of different a little bit. Right. Like, it, I don't know. It wasn't just physically that stuff really affected me mentally. Yeah. And that's what kind of made it so scary for me. Cause I've had some, even after once I stopped racing, I had some really dark times that didn't just go away. You know what I mean? Um, it took time and work and, um, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a really hard time. So if I were come back and, and do good and which 
because I'm, I just feel like I can, you know, it would mean almost more to me than ever before. Like, it's just, that's how bad it was for me personally. And uh, so, yeah, that's that. I don't want to always just, you know, have this sob story, but I'm just trying to express my feelings. So I want to race again. And, and I guess I'm, I'm going to try and enjoy the road to where I think I can be again. Yeah, no, good to hear it. Good to hear it. Better than better than losing, you know, one of the stars of the sport. That would be terrible. So I'm glad you're back. Yeah. At least you're trying. I appreciate it. it. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I, I don't know. Cool. We, we leave you alone. When guys have problems, we're just like, ah, we're going to leave the guy alone. So thanks for giving me time. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I sometimes you have problems and it's not a big deal, but there's just certain times where I just wanted to be left alone for a bit. And yeah, but yep. um, we're, we're back in it. So I appreciate I appreciate the call. Cool. All right. Just a few weeks away. Ken Roxon is racing again. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. All right. Cheers. See ya. Cool. Thank you.